Hey everyone, my name is Rebecca, I'm a fish biologist, an ichthyologist and also a PhD student. I specialise and study the evolution of laurel card catfishes, which are also known as plecos, hooktail catfishes, bristle noses, ottos, ottosinclers, um, etc. within the aquarium trade, aquarium hobby. And today I'm going to talk about a topic that maybe not many people actually give thought to but it actually might cause a lot of misconceptions when people are thinking about fish keeping, researching fishes, looking at different fishes and sort of stuff like that when they're looking online, in books, uh, whether it's a leaflet etc. All resources this actually applies to and it can cause some pretty big mistakes. So when you're looking at buying a fish you'll think about obviously how big does it grow to and how big does it get or even how big is it as a juvenile what's the growth rate etc and you'll see a measurement and sometimes it will just be in the units that you're using and there's a big issue with certain units which I'll go on to a bit later but you'll have this measurement but what does that measurement actually mean so what a lot of people don't realize is a lot of fishes, the reliable measurement that we're using for these fishes is known as standard length. And you'll see in many websites, most reliable websites will have this, some reliable websites might not have, but they'll still be using this measurement because they're written by people that have um, a lot of knowledge in that hobby hopefully and or in that group of fishes in the hobby also leading on to science and you'll see the initials SL and this means standard, standard length and this is used on websites like Planet Catfish, Seriously Fish, uh, Scott Cat, probably um, a lot of the reliable websites will use this measurement and sometimes they won't even say but you can kind of tell that they're using this measurement which is standard length and you might think oh great that's still something that I'm probably using but I would say unless you know what standard length is you're probably not using it standard length is a measurement from the tip of the head to the end of the caudal peduncle so the end of the caudal peduncle is before the caudal fin or tail fin starts so the measurement is tip of the head to where the tail starts basically that excludes the caudal fin the tail fin and this means that a lot of estimates of what people think their fish will grow to is a lot, a lot smaller than what it actually can grow to. And this is why it's important to sort of be clear on standard length versus other measurements. There's a lot of websites that also copy information, like copycat sort of websites, and they list these measurements without saying standard length or anything, and they just say this is the maximum size. And Without the caudal fin, they're technically not wrong but not right, but they, you need to be specific because there can be quite a bit of difference and this is kind of an issue of where do you measure from. So if you're including the caudal fin, caudal fins can be damaged. But also what point do you do it on the caudal fin? Some fishes have really long caudal extensions. So do you include that? So what would be a sort of a 30 centimetre standard length fish could then end up being a 60 centimetre total length fish if you include those caudal extensions. But they're often damaged. Do they equate to how much space the fish will take up? They can be scarred and not really grow. Caudal fins are often damaged so they're unreliable to measure in general. And there's so much variation in that caudal length. So if you're doing total length, which is tip of the head to the end of the caudal fin, it doesn't really give as much information on the size of the actual fish. Fish. There's also fork length, which is great if your fish is a fork tail, but if not, it's not really much help, and it doesn't really, it's probably much more reliable than total length. But total length is a big issue of where do you measure from. And there's many reasons that we just use standard length and it's just much more reliable in general. But if you're using this to uh, total length or thinking that, it's just you're really underestimating how big your fishes can grow because you're excluding the caudal fin and therefore you're thinking the whole fish 
is a much smaller one. And you see that quite often with a lot of fishes like lower carp. So people think that it's a sort of like a 15, 20 centimetre fish. And they're excluding the idea that that 15 or 20 centimetres is just the body itself, not the fin. And also with caudal extensions, some they just do get scarred or damaged. The other aspect of this sort of fish measurements is that length of the fish doesn't always give the full information. And this is really important in certain fishes. Some fishes are particularly wide, so the length is kind of matched by the width. But other fishes can be really tall. So we've got Tyrophyllum, which is angel fishes, and also Discus and Physodon. They're particularly tall as well. So you'll take up a lot more space. We don't really, you can't really use like sort of square footing for fishes because it kind of is a little bit more difficult for giving information. But what this actually leads to is the study or the scientific sort of inclusion of something called morphometrics. So morphometrics is the study of measuring shape, sort of distances, proportions within a fish. And each different group of fishes has a different set of proportions. So I'm familiar with the ones for lower cardae, so plecos, whiptail catfishes, etc. all have the same one. And these, this is mostly standardised by the description of Bacolta sabjai, which I think is Armbuster 2009, but I'll put in the references below. But there's other ones such for Corridor Dene, they have slightly different ones, and it depends what point you're measuring from. And this builds up a big sort of visual sort of measurements of every important part of the fish. So you've got head length, head width, width between the eyes, width between the nares, and it's more for comparison. So not all of it is useful for fish keepers, but some of it can actually be really important for identifying between different species because they might have slightly different or different entirely measurements. A big one you might see is the pectoral fin length, whether it kind of goes past the anus or not. That's pectoral fin length would be included, so it would be like pectoral spine, but is not really one of the major sort of ones that you'll see in the little list, I think, for memory that you're, but it's quite in, important to know, uh, knowing the different fins and just morphometrics can just be useful, but it, that's why there's so many different measurements and one of those is standard length. Any reliable website will be probably using scientific resources rather than oh, mine grew this big, so this is the maximum length. Because otherwise you'd see so much like clam loaches only go to 5-10 centimetres, which we know they don't, but if people were only writing on their experiences of how big theirs grew, that's what people would think. And you do see it kind of, it's kind of like with lifespans where people write how long their fish live for, therefore that's how long they all live for. So that's why there's this sort of element of what the scientific papers say or scientific resources, what people have seen in the world and then also how large they get in captivity which reliable websites like Seriously Fish, Planet Catfish, Scott Cat, quite a few of the others do include rather than just doing sort of what you um, experience as in it, and it usually is more of an underestimate. But there is a lot of this copycatting that you have to be aware of. So there's one other thing that is what may be a little bit more controversial, and that is what system of measurements we're using. So in science, we use the metric system, but we also try to use the most precise system available. You don't want to be using meters when the difference between one meter can mean quite a different, if something's reaching half of that meter, is quite a big difference. You want to kind of make the measurements as precise as possible. Hence why you'll see millimeters used with uh, fishes, but unless you're, I guess, I don't think there's any, I guess some you might want to use centimeters like sharks, but that's where they're particularly large and it, the differences don't make that much difference. But for our sort of size fishes, a centimetre makes quite a big difference on the actual size of the fish. 
So this is why we're using very precise measurements and that's why you'll see the millimetres metric system used all the time and that's what science, science just uses the metric system mostly because it is the most precise and sort of reliable system without going into halves and stuff like that. But this is why it kind of gets to a big pet hate of mine which is not just are we not understanding where we're measuring the fish from, so what points we're measuring, also using inches. Inches is quite a big difference, it's like that. So if you're saying a fish is 5 inches, I guess it's an inch like that maybe, if you're saying a fish is 5 inches and that's more suitable for your tank, it can get to quite a big margins of error between the difference between that 5 inch, that 6 inch and that 7 inch rather than just going with millimetres or centimetres and also there is that margins of error of being absolutely vague with it so the hair is better to be more precise if possible and also because you can't really say call, you can say quarters but it's better to just be a little bit more precise when it comes to the sizes of different fishes and what you're measuring and that's why even American resources for well reliable websites do tend to use that millimetres which is also more a scientific book scientist that you won't see scientific papers listing inches but there's quite a lot of margins of error and often when people are stating the inches that fish will go to they're often wrong a lot of the websites or you'll see comments and stuff when they're saying oh it goes to 10 inches Firstly, usually those ones don't, they usually get bigger or maybe barely smaller. It's always underestimating because I guess there's that error with standard length. But I think I end this video here, so it's a little bit about morphometrics and a little bit about why, <laughs> what measuring, like how to measure your fishes and also think about how you're relaying information on size of fish because it does matter and we know it matters because when people underestimate the size their fish will grow to they end up putting it in a tank that's much smaller than what it requires so anyway i end this video here thank you for watching don't forget we have a discord server if people are interested where we discuss anything more scientific in fish keeping maybe more advanced style of fish keeping or just maybe more thoughtful ethical styles of fish keeping but anyway thank you for watching if you like my videos please comment like and subscribe and goodbye